that was 27 years ago we first came to Australia and just people did, they couldn't even spell Buddhism, let alone know what Buddhism was. So imagine like going around the streets dressed like this, but you've got some really good stairs, but it's a great advertisement, you know, like uh, they couldn't sort of ignore you dressed like this. But it was tough at first because we didn't have any money, we didn't have a place to stay, so it was very tough. But little by little, when people got to trust you, that was the most important thing because they checked you out for the first couple of years, knew you were sort of real monks, you were practicing uh, well, you were simple, and you were teaching good things, being kind, and those were sorts of things which inspired people to say, yeah, we want these monks to survive, so they supported us. So we managed to build up a strong community over the years. Today is a special celebration from Ajahn Pram's 60th birthday. Thank you to Ajahn. Beautiful heart and beautiful mind. It's very nice to have my big brother visit me from uh, England for the first time. It's about time you come here, big brother. After many times I visited you, and this is the first time you come to visit me. But nevertheless, I have put on a big party. It's not my birthday party. It's welcoming my big brother from UK. So welcome to this humble place. As you see, I live a very simple life. <laughs> With lots of solitude and peace. <laughs> but nevertheless, it's very nice to see you here on my 60th birthday. And I forgive you publicly for all those times you beat me up when I was a kid. <laughs> so what is your reflections coming to a Buddhist monastery for the first time? My reflections are how busy it is and how many people are here and how well regarded you are. Buddhism is growing in the Western world and so am I. See that? <laughs> Very good. Humour, that was you know, part of my upbringing. My father came from Liverpool. If you haven't got a sense of humour in Liverpool, you don't survive. But it's also just part of who you are. It's just being normal, being human, being even though you're a monk, and sometimes people think that that's this huge spiritual advanced being who you can't get close to. Humour is something which draws people together. When you laugh, everybody laughs, and that means that everybody is part of you. When I was in Hong Kong recently, after I left, one of the nuns who at the temple said, thank you for coming. Before you came, I was not allowed to laugh. Every time I smiled, people said, no, Buddhists aren't supposed to do that. When you came here and smiled and everyone was happy, now I can smile as well. Thank you so much. <laughs> so it's a beautiful, compassionate thing to do to make people happy. And much of humour is about a truth, about you know, the human condition of what we are and just how stupid we are sometimes. That's why people laugh, because when we laugh, we're laughing at ourselves. Bring over some dim sums. <laughs> Please. Yeah, this is a message for everybody in Hong Kong. Bring over some good dim sums. <laughs> Uh, being a good teacher is again being able to not talk down to people, but talk not, not above people, but talk at the same level. You can be honest, you can be upfront, you can teach from the heart, and you can bridge that gap. And the relating Buddhism uh, to people's daily lives, and humour as well. And one of the most important things is, I found in teaching, never planning what you're going to say, but just uh, keeping a kind, peaceful mind, and then relating to people. For example, I gave a talk uh, a couple of nights ago about Buddhism and bananas. Now when you have a banana, you usually peel it from the top. And that's a lot of suffering. Sometimes it squashes, sometimes it's hard to open. And the reason is we don't really follow the experts. Who are the experts with bananas? Monkeys. And if you watch how a monkey peels a banana, it peels it from the bottom. So when you learn how to peel it from the bottom like the experts do, you have less suffering. And that's like a simile about people come to the, the experts, the monks, they learn how to meditate, they learn how to let go of suffering and pain in life. Because too much in life, it's like we peel the banana at the wrong end. And that's why you have pain and suffering. So you come and learn from the monks, you learn how to peel life at the right end, and it doesn't get all squashy and squishy.
Yeah, there's already one goal in the last few years which I've been working on is to have equity between the genders so that uh, to have uh, full ordination for nuns and we've managed to start that off a couple of years ago. It still hasn't got full acceptance yet but uh, certainly if Buddhism is going to survive in our modern world in the West and in the East, you know, we have to um, make sure that there is uh, equity which is just basic respect. That's as it was in the time of the Buddha. Female monastics getting as much support, reaching the very heights of spiritual attainments so there'll be hardly any difference between the, the nuns and the monks. Equal respect. One of the most important things is sincerity because uh, so many people have lost their faith in institutions, in government, in police, even teachers, and in churches as well. But, you know, we've, for the last 27 years we've been here, we've had an impeccable record. And that's one of the wonderful things we've been able to achieve, uh, simply because we've been so open. And people have, again, they've tested us out, they've seen that what we say is what we do. And in this monastery, twice a year, you can go in any monk's hut and have a look how we live. Go under the mattress, if they have a mattress, a lot of us sleep on the floor, see if we've got any Playboy magazines or anything like that. There's nothing there at all, it's just, you know, actually, as we are, you can see as we live, as we should be, like monks. This place we're standing at now, this is our monastery. And this is, we have, uh, we'll have about 20 monks here soon. And this is a place, this is our home. In order to make sure that we look after the lay community, we've got the big center over in Nolamara, but we need places where people can meditate and be quiet, so we have the meditation retreat center as well. And that's incredibly popular uh, because we've made it comfortable for people. So meditation is not some like going to the dentist, which you have to be afraid of, but you've got to do anyway, so you grit your teeth and think, oh, I better go on meditation retreat. That's something you like doing, because it's comfortable. So hope everyone has a wonderful day and make peace, be kind, be gentle and please smile a lot.